I mean, I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone who was a career criminal for a number of years that just never cooperated on any level whatsoever. I know it does happen, and you know, you could say you're one of them. Dirk. You know, Dirk. Dirk was flawless. But wasn't that the whole story about, remember, he had a charge, a shooting charge with him and King Von. Mm -hmm. And after King Von died, they dropped the case up, up on him, but they also said if King Von was alive, he would definitely be charged with this murder, or yeah. not a murder, or a shooting. This, it's under murder, yeah. And people started thinking, oh, is that because Dirk told on Vaughn after he died? From what I understand, because um, I know another YouTuber by the name of Seti Nash actually released the body cam footage from that incident, mm -hmm. and then there was actual footage of the surveillance video. Someone took it with a cell phone or it was on the body cam, whatever. From what I understand, they misidentified Dirk, and it changed into now nah, Vaughn was the one that did this, and they didn't have enough evidence to uh, convict Dirk, but they would have pursued it with Vaughn. And I mean, knowing Vaughn's history, fucking shooting everything, it's not that surprising to hear that he was the one that popped dude. But I've never seen anything implying that Dirk gave or cooperated or did anything yeah. against King Vaughn. Yeah, I mean, listen, me and Academics talked about it. Uh, Dirk feels the way he feels about rats because someone cooperated against his dad and mm -hmm. his dad was in prison for like 20 years and he missed out on, you know, an important part of his childhood and he felt he would have turned out differently if his dad was around, yeah. you know, to give him guidance and everything else like that. Right. Dirk, Dirk was one of the first people who explained, um, quote unquote, snitching in a way that it felt so personal that it didn't feel like somebody trying to cosplay or just say what they believe the streets. Like, I like I felt when he was telling me that, I felt that it was his childhood, like almost crying out to say, like my father was in there. He, he literally says he's had to grow up around women. Yeah. He said, that took my father away from my life. Yeah. I could say it, it was all hurt. I could, him saying that was yeah. all hurt. And that that made me realize I'm like, shit, this is not just a guy who wants to seem like he's tough or street saying this. This is a guy who he feels this type of action has ripped apart his life. And he also continued a little further when he was like, it's like it was a reflection of this is why I kind of am who I am. And this is kind of why I, I, I landed in certain circumstances because my father wasn't there. <laughs> I mean, that's valid. Yeah. That's valid because that comes with trauma. But on the flip side, and me and me and academics talked about this, is like, well, you could feel that way, but you also, as an adult, have to say, well, his dad was also involved in some sort of criminal activity right. for someone to be able to tell on him. Yeah. Now, you could say, oh, he was doing nothing and this guy just ratted out the blue and whatever, but most times there's usually something that a person can snitch on. Yeah. Like, I'm never worried about snitches because I don't do anything. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I if mean, someone that, that, snitched on me, you'd be thing, like, for what? <laughs> yeah, that was the thing with me was accepting responsibility, not being mad at the person that snitched on me when I went to prison, but the fact that I gave him the ability to have something to snitch exactly. on. But I mean, at the same time, maybe he does hold something against his father, but, at the, you know, he, he going to speak on rats and feel. And yeah. Dirk, Dirk DM me. Oh, did he? Yeah, he told me, he said, yo, you you a hero in the eyes of the trenches. Hmm. So he he fucked with what I'm doing, and obviously I salute how he handled himself. But um, Dirk standing on business with that rat shit. Yeah, man, shout out to Dirk. You know, uh, he said what he said about me because of uh, a situation where we accidentally released uh, a piece of footage uh, about a, a baby uh, that he was having with his girl. Mm. He had asked us to take it down and my staff ended up dropping the ball and it came out accidentally. Uh, but I, I understand why he feels that way. But, you know, I mean, I, I remember when I interviewed uh, Freeway Ricky Ross and he said something very interesting. He said that when he first got locked up, uh, his plug was the one that snitched on him. Yeah. And this is someone who he made tens of millions of dollars with. And he was super close with and everything else like that. And I remember when he got to prison, 
He said he was mad. He was mad. He was mad. How could this dude tell on me after everything we've gone through? And then after a certain amount of time, he came to the realization that snitching is just part of the criminal game. And you can't be mad at the person who snitches on you because it's going to happen regardless. Yeah, it's going to happen. It's very rare. Like, did you get snitched on at some point? The case I went to prison for. There you go. Yeah. Everyone I talked to that's been to prison for any real amount of time has had someone snitch on them. So at what point do you do you stop getting mad at the snitches and say, this is just part of the lifestyle that I'm in? Yeah, it comes with it. I am going to do crimes and people are going to tell on me. So unless I want to do everything completely solo and not involve another human being in it, I am going to assume that all these people around me, my whatever, my, my fellow gang members, my best friends, my road dogs, whatever title you want to give these people, when faced with football numbers, they're probably going to turn on me. Yeah. And they're going to justify it. All the mafia guys that I interviewed that have told on people always had a great reason. Well, I was going to not tell, but then they threatened my family. So now I told on everybody. Yeah. You know, the same with the Bull interview. It's like, okay, not only did you tell on the person, like, was it John Gotti, who John Gotti. he felt was turning on him, but you told on a bunch of different bosses. Mm -hmm. And his answer was like, well, I was the only one that told that they had all types of charges against them. Like, everyone will justify Six, nine it. had his, oh, he fucked my girl. and da, He da, fucked da. my girl. He, oh, they threatened me. They whatever. But you're the one pushing the line. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to snitching, people need to just accept that if they don't want to be snitched on, just don't do any crimes. Do but no if you crime. do do crimes, you'll probably get snitched on. I don't know anybody that I've interviewed that's never been snitched on. That's just anybody. crazy. Let that sink in.